Hello! This video is about using analog logic to do interesting things with basic LFOs. And it's not as complicated as that might sound. It's really just about taking two simple waves that are cycling at different rates and deriving a couple of extra signals based on whatever is the higher or lower of the two voltages at any given moment, the maximum and the minimum. Using these signals, you can make a voltage control pitch sequencer You can generate wonky off-grid looping rhythm patterns. Or you can just make some complex related signals to modulate a voice. The module that I'm using today is the Nekia Circuits Obsidian, which Nekia kindly sent over along with the Root Locus filter that I did a separate video about recently. Obsidian is a pair of identical LFOs with a built-in analog logic section. The LFOs each have a triangle and pulse output, and each one has an FM input with an attenuverter. Each of these is normal to the triangle of the other side, so you can cross-modulate their rates without using patch cables. There's a symmetry input which lets you adjust the width of the pulse or morph the triangle into a rising or falling saw, and there's a reset input. Then in the middle, there's a mixing and analog logic section which takes away from each side. You can use this switch to choose whether that's the pulse or the triangle. The outputs are the sum of the two, the difference between the two, which is basically the sum with one side inverted, and the momentary maximum and minimum. It's these max and min outputs where things get interesting. When we feed in the pulse waves, we essentially have digital logic here, as the signal is only ever in one of two states, high or low. Max is equivalent to a logical OR, so the output is high whenever either or both of the inputs are high. Uh, min is equivalent to a logical AND, the output is only high when both inputs are high. But when you use triangle waves, the max and min give you more complicated shapes, because the outputs just track whichever input is currently higher or lower than the other. So in this video, I'm going to build three patches that explore some of the things you can do with these features. And of course you can achieve similar results with other modules too. All you need is a pair of LFOs with pulse and triangle outputs, ideally with reset inputs and control over the pulse width, and a way of deriving the minimum and maximum of two signals. You could do this with a module like the Mutable Instruments Kinks, the Chaos Devices Samara, the Dopefer A172, or the Expert Sleepers Disting in A4 mode to name just a few. So let's crack on. Okay, this first patch is based around one of my favourite modular techniques, which is taking an LFO or any other kind of slow moving voltage and using a quantizer to derive a pitch sequence from it, an arpeggio or a little repeating melodic phrase. When you use two LFOs and analog logic, it really opens up the palette of shapes and patterns you can generate using this method. Um, so the way I've got things set up here is um, I've got the left side of Obsidian pulse output. Uh, that's going into the logic section and also going into data here on channel 1, which is the green trace. So you can see that's a kind of square shape. I've got the bottom pot here on Opal just sending a fixed offset voltage into the symmetry control, which lets me control the width of that pulse. As I turn it up, the pulse gets very narrow, if you're following the green trace. And as I turn it down below zero, it gets wider and wider. Um, and you'll see why this is important shortly. I'll leave it in the middle for now. Um, from the second half of Obsidian, I've got the triangle output going into the logic section and also going into data on the blue trace. So that's the blue triangle there. And then the red trace on data is the min output from the logic section, the logical minimum. And you can see there that whenever the green trace is at its minimum, then the red trace is flat at the bottom. And whenever the green trace is high, then it's basically allowing through the blue trace, so you're getting these kind of like broken triangular kind of shapes on the red trace. Let's get this quantized and into an oscillator so we can actually start hearing things. To start with, I'm actually just going to take the triangle output because it's a bit easier to hear uh, what's going on when that's quantized before we start getting into more complex shapes. So yeah, I've got the output, the, that triangle is running through the top two bits of, a, of Opal here, also from Nikia circuits, which I'm then using to attenuate and add an offset. That's going to run into the ornament crime at the top left of the case. The quantized pitches are going to go into sizzle, and the whole patch is going to be clocked from PAMS, um, which I'm also going to take a copy of that clock into the yellow bottom trace on data so we can see what's going on. Let's get that started. So every hit of the yellow trace is a note, basically. And if you follow along with the blue trace, we've got a kind of arpeggio that's following the shape of that blue trace. It's going up and down. If I slow that down. I've got the quantizer set to a kind of pentatonic scale for 
everything is relatively harmonious. And you can see we get some nice patterns already just by playing with that rate. So let's slow it down a bit. And also I should say hitting a reset every two bars into the reset of both LFOs so we get a pattern that repeats every two bars, every 32 notes basically. So let's take instead that logical minimum output, so channel 3, the red trace. Just playing with that offset voltage so we're... So now when this trace is at minimum we're just getting the root note. And now if I adjust the width of that pulse, the narrower that is the more it's kind of stuck on that bottom note. And as I widen that pulse, we're getting more of that arpeggio shape coming through those higher notes rather. Let's try a slightly more interesting trigger pattern than just straight 16th notes. So now we've got quite a nice little pattern which as we adjust this pulse width we can allow more or less of that arpeggiated element. Leave it there. Let's add a little bit of modulation to this voice. I've got some other stepped random coming in from Pams. Just add a kick drum. And some other drums. So then just by varying this pulse width, getting all these variations on this two bar pattern. And of course we can play with the, the rates of both those LFOs for infinite variety. It's a nice way to create these patterns that evolve slowly. You could always modulate this with another LFO, of course. Okay, next let's look at drum programming using the pulse wave outputs of the two LFOs and the minimum maximum logic to derive some interesting kind of cross rhythms. Uh, the way I've got this set up is the left side of Obsidian is the master clock effectively. That's putting out what I'm going to use as my eighth note pulse for this whole patch. Um, that's the green trace here on data. I know it's a bit of a forest of cables here so I'll explain what's going where. So yeah, the pulse output of channel A is going to the green trace. The pulse output of channel B is going into the blue trace, channel 2 of data. That's running slightly slower, as you can see. I've got um, Opal with fixed offset voltages controlling the symmetry or the pulse width of both of those. At the moment, they just set to 12 o'clock. Um, and I've just got dummy cables here into the, pit, uh, the frequency CV inputs. Although these have centered tents, uh, I just want to be absolutely sure there's no cross modulation happening and the rhythms are absolutely regular. So um, these are just dummy cables. Um, then I've got the minimum and maximum outputs going into channels 3 and 4 of data. That's the red and yellow trace at the bottom. And you can see we're getting some kind of complementary pulse outputs here. Um, I've also got the pulse output of channel 1, the green trace here. That's also running through a clock divider to give me um, a divide by 2 to use as a kick drum signal. So I've got eighth notes there and then quarter notes for the kick. And I'm also using a divide by 8 to reset the other side every 8, so, so every... Uh, two bars effectively. Um, so yeah, the blue trace here will lock back in, will reset every two bars of the um, green trace eighth notes. It all makes sense when you hear it. So let's get some things happening. This is the hi-hat part. So that's the green trace. 
And here from the divide by two of the clock divider is the kick drum part. I'm using Shack Matt's battering ramp for the kick and I'm using a squid sample for some just some uh, drum samples. Uh, let's have a listen to the blue trace, which is channel B. Just it's this is not the logic section, this is just the, the sort of free running pulse, which is going to be reset every two bars. So I've managed to kind of tune that in to be fairly regular, but it's kind of slightly before the beat there, which is cool. We'll come back to that in a sec. Let's get the other parts plumbed in. Um, so I'll take the red trace into this sound. Kind of electronic percussion hit. And let's take the yellow trace. So we're really getting this kind of nice wonky pattern. I can change that reset to every one bar as well. Let's just go into there. For the moment. And then by playing with these... pulse width there, I'm, I'm adjusting that and now I'm kind of locking that snare into the beat and these other signals are now aligned. Let's just adjust the, narrow the width of the main pulse, now we're getting some swing. Let's go back to a two bar reset. And that's a pretty cool rhythm, just from two square LFOs. And of course we can play with the speed of the second one like this. And done in all sorts of wonky rhythms which are slightly chaotic. Of course, you don't need to use these signals to trigger drum sounds. You could use these as rhythmic modulation for other elements of a patch. I just want to kind of show what you can do with a bit of analog logic. all these kind of wonky rhythms that you wouldn't really get out of a straightforward drum programmer. So finally, I just want to look at using the minimum and maximum outputs of the logic section to create a couple of related but more complex LFO waves based on the triangles from the two channels of Obsidian. So into the scope, I've got the green trace is the triangle output of uh, LFO1, and the blue trace is the triangle output of LFO2. The red trace is the logical minimum, and the maximum is going into the yellow trace there. So we can see we've got these four related signals. If I increase the frequency of LFO2, you'll see the effect it has on the two traces at the bottom and vice versa. So let's just keep these rolling fairly slowly to start with. And let's just throw these signals at a kind of static tone coming out of Sizzle and see how interesting we can make it. So here's the basic raw, unchanging digital tone. And let's start feeding in some modulation into the various bits. Let's take the red one into the, through an attenuator into the algorithm. And let's take yellow trace into the level of oscillator B, which is set to noise mode, which will give us a bit of kind of noisy coming in and out. And let's give the whole thing some reverb. And I'll just take the blue trace to the shape of oscillator B. And 
let's get a bit of cross modulation of the frequencies happening. So now their frequencies are affecting each other. So I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm obviously just scratching the surface of what you can do with LFOs, but hopefully you've got a couple of ideas for things to try with your own setup. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and leave a like and a comment if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.